The following is from a document read out loud during an urgent conference in the Imperial Japanese General Headquarters. It outlines Japan's grand strategy for defeating the United States. I'm Griffin Johnson, the Armchair Historian, and today we'll be answering two questions. First, what was the primary motivation of Japan's decision to wage war on the Western powers, namely the United States? And second, how was that war fought? But first, I'm pleased to announce that today's video is sponsored by Battleship Empire. Battleship Empire is a realistic military strategy game for mobile devices, which does an excellent job in recreating historical naval battles from the Second World War. Stay tuned for an exclusive offer from the team behind Battleship Empire. Three years after the outbreak of the Second Sino-Japanese War, Japan invaded French Indochina in an effort to cut off Chinese supplies. It was an easy target. Germany had just finished their 46-day conquest of the French mainland. Shortly after, Japan took another gamble and allied itself with Germany and Italy by signing the Tripartite Pact. It is believed by some historians that the Japanese government hoped that the US would be intimidated into loosening its antagonistic stance on Japan as a result of Axis backing. In the following year, Japan began showing interest in the Dutch East Indies. In response to Japanese aggression, the US announced an oil embargo and froze Japanese assets being held in the US in July of 1941. The Imperial Japanese Navy predicted that they would be completely out of fuel in just two years as a direct result of the embargo. At this point, Japan arguably had no other option except to launch an aggressive succession of attacks on Malaya and the Dutch East Indies, which would provide the oil, rubber, tin, and iron it would need to sustain itself in a protracted conflict. There was one issue. The Philippines were controlled by the United States, and if the invasion of British Malaya and Dutch East Indies provoked the US into waging war on Japan, the Philippine Islands could not only act as a crucial staging area for an invasion of Japan, but they could also block off any imports coming into the Japanese mainland. Therefore, planning for US involvement would be required if the Japanese ever hoped to achieve their Pacific supremacy. The occupation of these three major territories would also allow the formation of a fortified defense perimeter, which the Japanese hoped would ward off any and all amphibious landings on the home islands, in the case of British or American retaliation. In Showalter's words, Japan proposed to fight the Pacific War as it had fought China and Russia, limiting the conflict by escalating its material and moral costs beyond what the Western powers, America in particular, were willing to pay. The strategy was predicated not on American effeteness, but on American rationality. By 1940, the United States had formulated a plan of its own, in case that war broke out in the Pacific. It was called Plan Dog, and it can be summed up with just two words, Germany first. The United States would focus its full attention on defeating Germany and concede the losses of the Philippines, Guam, and Wake Island. After Europe was in Allied control, the United States planned to retake its holdings in the Pacific and strike Japan itself. Soroku Yamamoto, the Japanese Marshal Admiral of the Navy during the Second World War, was responsible for planning an attack on Pearl Harbor, which professors Tomoyoki Shizu and Raymond Callahan described as one of the most elaborate efforts to coordinate simultaneous attacks by aircraft and submarines. The attack commenced on the morning of December 7, 1941. Tasked with destroying key U.S. air and naval targets, hundreds of dive bombers, torpedo bombers, and fighters filled the sky. Despite the logistical challenges of the raid, the Japanese succeeded in destroying 160 American aircraft, sinking eight ships, four of which were battleships, damaging 10 others, and killing 2,335 American sailors. In Eyewitness Pacific Theater, Donald Stratton, one of the few soldiers who survived the explosion of the battleship Arizona during the Pearl Harbor attack, wrote that, A fireball engulfed the whole foremast. Very few escaped from the bow of the ship. 
We were pretty burned. Our hands, our hands were just raw, and, in the meantime, my fingernails had all come off. Admiral Yamamoto hoped that the attack would accomplish two things. One, damage American morale, and two, neutralize the U.S. Navy's material advantage. Although the American fleet was temporarily incapacitated, Japan had attacked Pearl Harbor when no U.S. aircraft carriers were in port, and so America was quick to recuperate from its losses. Still, the attack did provide Japan with a window of time to occupy Singapore, the Philippines, and the Dutch East Indies without much resistance. It's important to know that just before the attack on Pearl Harbor, unbeknownst to the rest of the world, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt approved the creation of the Manhattan Project, the purpose of which was to explore the military uses of the recently discovered phenomenon of nuclear fission. Whether they knew it or not, the Manhattan Project would be responsible for changing the course of world history forever, as we'll see towards the end of our video. Before we get to the war, a quick word from our sponsor. As I've mentioned before, Battleship Empire recreates the most iconic naval battles of World War II, from both the Pacific and Atlantic. When you start Battleship Empire, you'll select a faction, and then begin constructing a fleet at your dockyard. Soon, you'll be ready to fight your first battle. But before you enter into combat, you can devise your own battle plan. Be sure to carefully construct your formation, as numbers won't always win. Something I find interesting is that you can upgrade certain aspects of each ship, such as the elevator of an aircraft carrier or turret of a destroyer. Furthermore, certain tactical abilities can be upgraded on each ship. And if you want an edge over your opponent, Battleship Empire is offering you 100 gems, 20 crude oil, 50,000 gold, and most notably, the USS Hornet by using our promo code down below. The game is completely free to download, you can find the links in the description, available on all mobile devices. Now back to the video. The Malaya-Singapore campaign was a resounding success for the Japanese. In just two months, Singapore had surrendered, its fall considered one of the worst defeats in British military history. The Dutch East Indies were an even easier target for Japan, their only advantage being numerical strength. The Dutch had not responded to heightening anti-colonial sentiments in the region, and could not depend on the local troops to remain loyal to their Dutch commanders. In Java, for example, Dutch rule was deeply unpopular. The Japanese quickly captured the region and gained access to the crucial oil fields of southern Sumatra. In the Philippines, meanwhile, the situation was no better. Hours after the Pearl Harbor attack, half of the U.S. Army bombers at Clark Field were destroyed after a Japanese air raid, having short-sightedly being parked wingtip to wingtip. According to Victor Brooks in his book, Hell is Upon Us, the enemy bombers caught much of the American air fleet on the ground during refueling. The result was that, by the end of the month, Manila, the capital of the Philippines, was occupied by the Japanese. The commander of the local forces, General Douglas MacArthur was forced to order a last-ditch retreat to the Bataan Peninsula. In the same book, Brooks writes that, MacArthur now commanded a besieged army that was desperately short of food, medicine, and modern weapons. However, the Japanese overran almost every other objective in the region. The battling bastards of Bataan hung grimly on, and their commander emerged as America's most visible hero. But by 1942, approximately six months after the start of the invasion, American Filipino forces would be defeated. In the largest surrender in American history, 20,000 Americans and 60,000 Filipinos entered a brutal captivity from which only a minority would emerge alive. Four weeks later, in early May, the garrison on Corregidor was poured into surrender. The atrocities that followed these battles include the Bataan Death March and harsh treatment of Allied prisoners. Corporal Herschel Williams, in the book Iwo Jima, recalls how prisoners he saw return from Japanese POW camps did not even look human. I'll never forget them as long as I live. They just looked like a skeleton with skin drawn over it. After making a last-minute escape to Australia, General MacArthur vowed to reporters that he would return to the Philippines to avenge the loss. In Burma, a similarly elongated campaign developed, lasting from December 1941 to July 1945. Throughout most of that campaign, Japan clung on to its stronghold in Burma, the rationale being that doing so would stop the Allied flow of equipment to China and therefore hurt the Chinese war effort. 
Soon after the fall of the Philippines in May of 1942, the Japanese attempted to solidify their dominance in the South Pacific by occupying the strategic port Moresby on New Guinea, which resulted in the Japanese fleet making contact with the Allied fleet sent to intercept it, culminating in the Battle of the Coral Sea. The outcome of the battle is generally viewed by historians as a tactical victory for the Japanese and a strategic victory for the Allies, as the Japanese sank more ships, but their overall advance was halted. Two of Japan's fleet carriers were also rendered unfit for combat during the battle and unable to participate in the Battle of Midway one month later. The Battle of Midway shattered Japanese hopes of occupying Port Moresby due to the loss of aircraft carriers that would be needed to hold on to the territory. The battle also paved way for the Guadalcanal Campaign, which commenced in August 1942 and marked the start of Allied offensive operations in the Pacific. Despite having to contend with fierce Japanese resistance and tropical diseases, by February 1943, the American forces were victorious in their campaign. It was also around this time that the U.S. Army Air Forces began modifying B-29 bombers to make them more compatible with early atomic bombs. The American strategy after Guadalcanal was known as island hopping, which, as the name implies, consisted of amphibious attacks on strategic islands, which would provide staging areas for a future invasion on Japan. This resulted in three major battles. The first was the Battle of Saipan, which took place in June of 1944. Fighting was fierce, but after about a month, the Japanese were trapped, and rather than surrendering, they either committed suicide or died in desperate bonsai charges. The Japanese commander is quoted as having said, There is no longer any distinction between civilians and troops. It would be better for them to join in the attack with bamboo spears than be captured. In what would be the largest bonsai charge of the war, 4,300 Japanese charged in a 15-hour attack, resulting in the complete destruction of the garrison on the island and 650 American casualties. Meanwhile, in the Philippines, General MacArthur would fulfill his promise in 1944 after the Battle of Leyte Gulf, which was the largest naval battle in history, one that the Japanese lost decisively and never recovered from. People of the Philippines, he declared after coming ashore, I have returned. By the grace of Almighty God, our forces stand again on Philippine soil. The Japanese mounted an energetic counteroffensive, but sustained 190,000 casualties before being defeated by the American Filipino forces under MacArthur. The second to last major island battle, Iwo Jima, took place in February of 1945, and like Saipan, lasted one month. Notably, however, American forces not only lost more men on Iwo Jima than on Saipan, but they actually lost more men than the Japanese, who lost their entire 17,000-man garrison. At the end of the battle, the American flag was lifted on Mount Suribachi, which previously had been used to bombard U.S. forces. The final major island battle was Okinawa, which took place in April of 1945 and lasted about three months. The Americans wanted the island in order to establish air bases from which to launch air raids on Japan itself. Okinawa was the largest island battle of the war due to its proximity to the home islands. The United States took 50,000 casualties, about 20,000 of which were deaths. The Japanese lost about 100,000 of their 110,000-man garrison of the island. It was the largest amphibious campaign of the Pacific War and took a heavy toll on the civilian population of the island. It is said that the Battle of Okinawa led the Americans to come up with an alternative to the invasion of mainland Japan because of such fierce resistance. The alternative that was ultimately decided upon, instead, was to use strategic bombing to force Japan into submission. We'll return to the Pacific War Companion to summarize Japan's situation toward the end of the war. At the start of 1945, Japan was in a difficult position. Her most powerful warships had been sunk, her best pilots had been shot down, the fortified islands that formed her first line of defense had been lost. As a result, her home waters were dominated by American submarines, her communications with the rest of the Japanese Empire were all but cut off, her cities were subject to regular aerial bombardment, and her civilian population was on the verge of starvation. In March 1945, the first firebomb attack on Tokyo took place. By the end of the war, Allied air bombing killed about 333,000 Japanese and wounded 473,000 in total, although estimates vary quite significantly. 
Meanwhile, the atomic bomb was in its final stages of development, and was given final approval for its use in late July 1945. Exactly five months after the first firebomb attack on Tokyo, the world's first atomic bomb was dropped on the port of Hiroshima on August 6th. When the Japanese still refused to surrender, a second bomb was dropped on August 9th on Nagasaki. To make matters worse for the Japanese, the Russians invaded Japanese-occupied Manchuria that same day. On August 14th, a representative acting under the orders of Emperor Hirohito unconditionally surrendered, and the Pacific War was over. If you haven't already, be sure to check out Battleship Empire. Like I said, the game is free to download, and our promo code can be found below. Thanks for watching. I'd like to thank my general staff on Patreon. Fritz, Joe Crispin, Brandon Huayne, Derek Bello, Jake Hart, Pagan Butler, PJ Knave, Eric Greenwood, Patrick Reardon, John Graham, James Thompson, Jim Talbot, Dimitri Stillerman, and everyone else listed on screen. I'd also like to thank our team. David Manyar, Hert Boss, and Alexander Blake for making this video possible. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time with the Battle of Britain.